One of the tribe's early decisions was to hire a grant writer, resulting in a tribal Head Start program. Other grants bolstered tribal government and administration. However, the tribal council knew that over the long term it needed to develop a self-sustaining economy. With an eye on the future and commercial loans unavailable to the tribe, the council partnered with the Seminole tribe to open a bingo hall. With its success, they decided to build a casino. You know, we opened it and people were lined up to get in the doors. And so then to put together programs to uh, help our people, that was probably one of the most rewarding things that I've ever been part of. The resurgence of the Muckleshoot Indian tribe's resources began with the Bull decision. It accelerated with the introduction of gaming on the reservation, and it continues with the ongoing diversification of tribal business holdings and investments. But the true worth of the tribe's income is that it's managed in remembrance of the hard times and to ensure a brighter future. The wisest moves that we've made was to set up a, a, a budget system where the money isn't just uh, spent. We have reserves. Those funds help support a number of services for tribal members. Of highest priority are programs that help the Muckleshoot people help themselves. There are low-interest loans, home construction funds for elders and veterans. The tribe even provides help with mortgage down payments to qualified applicants. However, the most important program supported by tribal funds is education. The two most important priority areas are housing and education. The number one priority is education. The Muckleshoot Tribe provides on-reservation infant and childhood programs, K-12 through education, even college degrees. And so they can really go from, from birth to higher education now, right here on the reservation with those services. And the tribe has a full scholarship program for members who continue their technical training or higher education degrees. The program supported Madrine Salgado through her achievement of a bachelor's degree from the University of Washington. Being able to go up there and not have to worry about where my tuition money was coming from or my book money was coming from, I was very fortunate for that. Whether it's education or housing, I think it just gives you that sense of you're not in it alone and um, there's people behind you that are proud of you and that support you. Our greatest resource is our people. My name is Virginia Cross. I have served on the Tribal Council of the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe for over 30 years. When I was small, we had very poor conditions, but we are providing a better future and a better education for our children today. My name is Virginia Cross. I am proud to be a Muckleshoot Tribal member. The Muckleshoot Indian Tribe is a federally recognized tribe. This recognition is more than an acknowledgement of Indian heritage. It is recognition that the tribe possessed political authority over its members predating the United States, and it has retained that authority over time. This means the tribe functions as a government, meeting the current and future needs of its community. We are different than any other ethnic-based community. We're actually a people. We're actually a government. We're a sovereign nation. We elect our, our leadership. We, we have uh, committees that oversee land use and housing and health care. We deal government to government. We function as a government to a high standard because we want people to recognize us as a government. As a government, the Muckleshoot Indian tribe uses its business income in the same way other governments use tax revenues. The money supports services for the tribal community. Muckleshoot business income goes toward roads, utility systems, public safety, and courts. That income also supports health and human services, education, housing, and economic development. And the income funds robust fisheries, wildlife, and preservation departments to manage and preserve Muckleshoot natural resources. Thus, the majority of tribal revenues go toward funding the common good, rather than paying dividends to individual tribal members. I'm just glad that Muckleshoot had the vision that they were going to take care of their people. By, you know, building homes by providing education, by providing social services, by, by providing daycare and the tribal school and health services, um, everything that the tribe needs. And beyond tribal needs, the Muckleshoot economy supports the well-being of thousands of non-tribal families. We're the second largest employer in South King County. There's a lot of people that benefit from what we're doing. 
Local governments, schools, churches, and charities also benefit from Muckleshoot businesses. In the spirit and tradition of community giving, the Muckleshoot Indian tribe yearly contributes millions of dollars to hundreds of nonprofits throughout Washington. And the people from the Muckleshoot tribe are always trying to help others. We are honored that we have been selected to be a part of this bigger picture because it's a systemic effort by the Muckleshoot tribe in making a difference in the state of Washington. Without the support of groups like the Muckleshoot tribe, Pediatric Interim Care Center couldn't exist, couldn't do what it does. It's not just about us, it's about our neighbors too and helping them out and making sure that quality of life is, is, um, is risen for everybody, not just, not just us. While the progress made in less than a generation engenders pride and hope in the Muckleshoot community, the tribe is ever vigilant to preserve the lessons, leadership, and vision of its elders. Young people learn respect from the elders and give respect to the elders, but also the elders have a lot of wisdom. That wisdom of the elders is vital, because the tribe's future continues to be forged by a time not so long ago. <laughs> My first visit to the Muckleshoot Indian Reservation and meeting with some of the people there was just a social visit. This was in 1949, and I was stunned. They had no water system, obviously no indoor plumbing, no light except from a gas lantern that you lit, almost non-existent employment. And it's more of a shock to me now to come back and see where they are today. I think it's a, a testament to uh, just never giving up. As the Muckleshoot Indian tribe forges ahead, the goal is clear. Use the tribal income to meet the continuing and future needs of tribal members. There are existing cultural and human services needing support, plus programs and facilities yet to be funded. Then there are the needs of the tribe's youth. I would really like to see different kind of programs offered for youth. There's a lot of work to do with education and other social you know, issues that we have to deal with. Now I feel like uh, we're getting there. And we can continue to uh, strive to be better and have a better place for our kids. The future of the Muckleshoot tribe will always be rooted in the past. From honoring the wisdom of the elders and preserving their cultural traditions to the tribe's conservation of its natural resources. Muckleshoot community values are born of their ancestors. It's not just about you, it's not just about one family, it's about all of us. That sense of community really is handed down from generation to generation. To me, you're nothing without that. That's your, that's your foundation. That. That history part is your foundation. I think it's wise for people to know that we are Muckleshoot, that we were born here at Muckleshoot, we will live here at Muckleshoot, we will be here forever.